Hey guys, I'm finally doing episode 3 because I had strep throat for the past week. So let's go ahead and uh, without further delay get to our first article, which is the world's first water-cooled laptop. Now this is something that I knew was inevitable ever since I first laid eyes on the Corsair H50. And it's all going to be packed into the Alienware M18X. They say they were able to overclock the CPU from 3.5 GHz to 4.4 GHz and the GPU from 680 MHz to 800 MHz, which was able to give the laptop a 23% improvement in FutureMark's 3D Mark Vantage benchmark. As you can see, it's pretty much straightforward. Just a uh, water cooling pump connected to flat copper tubing that goes into a water block with a small pen matrix. And pretty much the only interesting part is that it doesn't have a radiator, it's more of a uh, hot plate with uh, a heat sink on it that the fans will blow air through. Here's a picture of the laptop with the uh, keyboard removed. As you can see, all the copper is nickel plated. And here's the bottom of the laptop. As you can see, it has large intake holes, only three of which has fans. And here's the back of the laptop where you can see all of the exhaust ports and what looks like to be the charging port. And lastly, they show a concept picture of an all-in-one PC, which has a more traditional radiator in the monitor arm. And now let's move on from water-cooled laptops to water-cooled GTX 680s. Basically all it is is a Corsair H50 connected to a GTX 680. It is reported to decrease the base temperature to 44 degrees Celsius and that the model will have a maximum noise level of 10% of any reference cooled model, which would be around 7 decibels. They only tell us the idle temperature of the card, but I'm assuming that is because there is no specifications regarding uh, what the stock clocks will be but it is rumored that this card may have a base clock of 1200 MHz. Now here's hoping that that ugly blue PCB will be placed by a black one before this comes out. Now on to an interesting picture that I found about Nvidia's Kepler GPUs, specifically the GK110, which might be called the GTX 685. The picture pretty much talks for itself, but it is still a rumor. Just pause your screen if you're not done reading it yet. I'm going to go ahead and move on to some awesome news from EBGA and their new global warranty. First and foremost, the product warranty covers the product and not the user. In addition, registration is no longer required for RMAs with their guest RMA process. Also, step up and extended warranties will be available for all original owners registered with the new global RMA system within 30 days of the purchase. And it is my understanding that cross-shipping RMAs are now free if you're willing to put up your credit card number as collateral. You can read more details in the official post in the description below. Now on to some NVIDIA Fermi news. As FXAA, Adaptive V-Sync, and many of the surround enhancements will be made available for Fermi-based products in the upcoming UDA driver. But GPU Boost and TXAA are Kepler-specific features that Fermi cards will not be getting. Now on to some not-so-pleasant peer-to-peer news as ISPs will begin to punish BitTorrent pirates this summer. This July, major U.S. internet service providers will start assisting copyright holders in their fight against online copyright infringement. Major ISPs, including Comcast, Verizon, and Time Warner Cable will begin fulfilling their obligations under the terms of a memorandum of understanding signed last year 
which will see the providers send out copyright infringement warnings. So come July, what changes should customers of the major ISPs expect? Those not engaging in file sharing on peer-to-peer -peer networks or those who use BitTorrent over a VPN or proxy will probably notice very little, as CyberLocker sharing is not covered. Well, apart from ultimately having to help finance the scheme through their ISP bills. But for those of you using BitTorrent without a VPN or proxy and choose to download or share popular music from EMI, Sony, Universal, and Warner, or do likewise with movies owned by Disney, Sony, Paramount, 20th Century Fox, Universal, and Warner, things will change. So, now if you get caught, basically the first time, you just get a slap on the wrist and they tell you it's illegal and to stop doing it. But the second time you're caught, the ISPs will send copyright alerts requiring acknowledgement of the receipt from the account holder along with a pledge to end infringing activity from the account. If you are caught a third time, you will be sent a similar letter that you have to respond to and your internet connection will have a throttled upload or download speeds and a temporary reduction in service quality to one step above dial-up. In addition, you will be redirected to a landing page so that customers can be further educated or your account can even be suspended. Now on to the last article about HTC's One XL, which is the American version of the HTC One X. It has all the same specs except for the processor, internal storage, and radios, which include LTE. The processor is a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 dual-core processor instead of the NVIDIA Tegra 3 chipset. While many users have complained about the fact that the US customers will not be getting a Tegra 3 HTC One X, the Snapdragon S4 dual-core processor has been known to be quite outstanding. It has even outperformed Tegra 3 quad-core and benchmarks. And it just so happens that somebody managed to get a HTC One XL benchmark. And it's twice as fast as any other Android device out on the market. Now as for what kind of bite that's going to put into the battery life is yet to be seen. And that's it for this week and hopefully we won't have such a big gap on any future episodes. See you next time.